Well, hello everyone. It's Brother Donnie. I hope you're doing well today. I wanted to come and been uh, a few things on my heart in regards to uh, YouTube ministry. And I've come to believe that with YouTube or any other social media ministry, that there's really zero accountability. And um, we are we are facing a crisis. And, and the crisis is, is that men and women can teach whatever they want to teach without any kind of guardrails. And some of them will not have any correction, will not accept any correction, and will not change, or they, they're really uncorrectable. Not because they can't change, but because they've chosen not to listen. Now, as some of you know, I've been going back and forth with Mr. Duke over at Rough Cut, and um, he's finally just flat out, I guess, blocked me off his channel. And all that started several months ago. He did a, a misguided video, and I'm being generous with that term, um, trying to show that God, out of his love, has need for man. And it was such a torture on the scriptures, and he really just tore it up bad. And when I corrected him on it, we went back and forth in comments and then back and forth in, in uh, email. And finally, it just wasn't going anywhere. He was just not answering to anything. So I made a video. I did not call his name. And I uh, issued correcting uh, scripture. And I tried to be as loving as kind as I could. Well, he comes back and does another video, called me out by name, and then decided that I'm no longer in the family of Christ, that I couldn't be called a brother. All because somebody dared to bring criticism to him. Now, I've seen this happen a couple of times. I've seen it happen in another channel. I've seen Mr. Duke do people on his channel the same way, uh, just uh, disregard their comments or, or ban them or whatever he does. But this is a this is a, a systemic problem that shows a, a greater issue that's going on. And that issue is, is that there is a whole group of supposed teachers that have no guardrails, and if you hold them accountable, they'll just not respond, or they'll just ban you. A teacher of the Bible should always be willing to suffer critique and criticism. A teacher of the Scripture should not just simply ban someone when they're challenged. Now, we've got this mindset that YouTube, is, you, you, you do YouTube just like you do a church. Whereas if you've got fault with the brother, you go to the brother in private. That's off the table in YouTube. And this is why. Because everything we do, we do it in public. And if in private you can't make any headway in emails or, or uh, on chats, what are you supposed to do? Now, what I've discovered is that there uh, of the thousands of teachers, and I even heard about another one that somebody told me this morning there was another one that would just ban people. And you've probably seen it too. I know I've seen two different men have their comments just stopped and taken off on Duke's channel in particular. And I don't know why Duke does that. I can't tell if he don't have courage to stand up for what he believes in or if he either just don't believe it or if he don't have the scriptural backing to believe it. But I want to share something with you in Galatians chapter 2, verse number 11. And I was thinking about this, and people come down on me as being a bully, and they come down on me as being unbending, and I'm very bending. But the, the truth of the matter is, folks, there's some hills worth standing on. And the gospel of Christ is worth standing on. God's word rightly divided, is worth standing on. 
The Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 says this. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For prior to coming of certain men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision. The rest of the Jews joined him in hypocrisy with the result that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward, here it is, about the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in the presence of all, if you being a Jew live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews, how is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? And then Paul goes on and tells us what was happening is Peter was being hypocritical and Paul opposed him to his face. I've been opposed to my face before. I've had to eat crow. I've had to correct doctrines. For instance, I've told y'all before, before I came to realize the truths of the grace of God in, in sovereign grace or Calvinism, I used to teach blatantly against Calvinism. Someone opposed me and brought that to my attention. And I had to look at that and I had to, to uh, change my teaching based off God's word. What Paul's done here, he's opposed Cephas for the truth. I want to challenge you people. Now, this is the problem. I'm going to make a statement here. I'm not trying to offend you, but based on my experience, most people who name the name of Christ do not have enough biblical understanding to discern whether they're being taught the truth or not. But I want to tell you, folks, all these people you listen to, including this one, me, all these people you listen to, you need to hold them to task because you're responsible for what you hear. And if you bring the truth to someone based off the scripture and you show them clearly in the scripture, and, and it may be to where y'all can't come to an understanding, y'all have to part ways, but if that person just simply cuts you off and, and just uh, starts to ban you or decides not to even uh, typically, for some reason, what they love to do to me is just not respond. I don't know where that came from, but they, they just don't respond. If that happens to you, they're not worth their grain of salt because we're, we're not uh, kindergarten here. We're dealing with God's word. We're dealing with the gospel. And, um, you know, I, I think back to this situation with Duke. Duke's problem is, is he's, uncorrect, he's uncorrectable right now. He, he's so inwoven in what he believes, especially about the King James, that he's on, I saw on, on the video he put out about the first video about Steve Lawson, I saw multitudes of people put comments where he was in the wrong. Uh, I seen other people put comments about uh, other videos where he's in the wrong and he'll just simply not listen. Now, that's why I tell you, YouTube, is the worst false teacher in the world because it has no buffers. It has literally no buffers. I can come on here and I can teach what I want to and it don't matter if you critique me. It don't matter if I'm telling you the truth. If I don't like it, I just won't respond or I'll block you. Folks, that's not the way it should be. We should, and that's why Paul, that's why Paul stood up to Peter. He wasn't flexing any kind of apostolic muscle because Peter was as much of an apostle as Paul was. Paul stood up to Peter because he says here in 14, uh, they were not, uh, they, but he saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. You see, that's what it comes down to. The, the point of fact is, folks, when somebody tells you, that you're less than because you don't read the King James Bible, they're not straightforward with the gospel living. When somebody tells you that because you read a New American Standard that your gospel is corrupt, and we sit and we say, well, that person, he really is not that bad. Listen, that's the baddest false teaching is Gnosticism. When, when you try to categorize people because of something they're not doing, that's legalism. It's legalism. So all I'm telling you folks, y'all need to beware because, and, and, and beware of what you say amen to. 
And I hope you have enough biblical understanding. It don't matter if you like me or not. It's okay. But you best have enough biblical understanding to know what you believe and not be, not be fallen for every little single thing. Speaking of Mr. Duke's video, the video he did about about God needing us, there was 100 people on there saying amen. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with y'all? The, the minute God needs us is the minute he's not God anymore. But in closing, if you find anybody that will not take correction, you need to wipe them, discount them out. Because a, a man of God will always take correction from the scriptures. The Bible says that the word of God is uh, all scripture, what does it say, is given so that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. It's good for rebuking. It's good for correcting in righteousness. It's good for instructing. That's, that's, our, that's our borderline. And if I teach you God's word and I'm not teaching it correctly and you show me in the scriptures clearly where it's not correct, then I must change. I must change or else I'm not a godly teacher anymore. These are serious things because we're so willy-nilly on everything else. Listen, the end of the world is not going to be the King James Bible. The, the, the badness in the church is not because of us not using certain Bible versions. The badness of the church is because God's people don't know what God's word is. And we're taken with every little whim of doctrine that comes along. Folks, let me, let me give you something to listen to. John MacArthur, let me, uh, Chicken Johnny, uh, R.C. Sproul, Legionnaire Ministries. Uh, uh, these are ones that you can rely on and trust. These are ones that I would take my family to. And it's not that you trust them just simply being a man. You trust their Bible teaching because they have a clear track record of teaching the scripture. And one other thing, it doesn't matter if you like the person or not. I see a lot of people who really love teachers and they develop relationships with them because I like the guy so much. And, and you're willing to look over uh, teaching that's not of value because you like them. That is of no value to you. You're wasting your time. It's fine that you like somebody, but, but that teacher should correct themselves and teach it correctly. Don't believe me. Look at your scripture yourself. Go read Galatians chapter two, verses 11 and following. Look how Paul dealt with Peter, uh, opposing him. And by the way, when it says opposed him, that literally means he stood him down because it says Peter was condemned. That means there was enough evidence there to condemn Peter for what he had done. And, and, and Paul opposed him. So there may be an air of frustration in this video. But I want to tell you, YouTube, please be weary with it. Because there is no barriers on it. Please don't take the word of what you hear. And just put it at face value. Take every word. Download the transcripts. Follow what the man is saying. And, and put it to God's word. Because that's what counts. You know, it don't matter. It only works. You know, we, we feel sorry for people that suffer false teaching. When it's their own fault, they're suffering false teaching. Because they're the ones that has itchy ears. They have emotional feelings. And I tell you the biggest part of it, I'm just going to be blunt with you while I got you. The biggest part of it is non-expositional preaching. We, we're, we're grown up and we've come accustomed to men having grabbing two scriptures here, grabbing a scripture here, having a little sermonette with two or three scriptures. Friends, it's your home. If I mailed you a letter, would you turn to the third page of the letter and start reading it? No. You start at the first word. This book is a, this Bible is a book of letters and it's meant to be disseminated as the whole counsel of God. Listen, it's fine if you know about divorce and uh, if you know about uh, uh, your uh, uh, being depressed and you know about, you know, worry and you know about all this stuff, that's fine. But, but when you're in serious study, you should go verse by verse by verse. And, and what we have, our churches, 
not all of them, some of them are products of preachers just picking here and there, picking here and there. Uh, I heard a preacher the other day who was doing a devotional. There were three scriptures in the context. He read the first scripture and the third scripture and left the middle scripture off for some reason. Why in the world did you do that? I have no idea. Because these were thoughts that God gave them, whole thoughts. God just didn't say, hey, Paul, I want you to write about depression. And then next time I want you to write about a fear. And next time, no, Paul, this is, this is what I want you to write. This is the whole letter. This is my thought to the church. And that's how we should gather that thinking. Remember, you're responsible. Hold these teachers accountable. Me, Chicken Johnny, and I know some of these big ones, it may be hard, like you know John MacArthur or, or Brother uh, uh, Winger or, or some of the other ones. It may be difficult because they're on a bigger scale. But you can still try to hold them accountable some measure. Hold people accountable for what you hear. Put it to your word. I do not believe for one minute these people that are preaching for like an hour and a half and somebody's supposed to be listening on this side of the screen, there is no way people are receiving all that information. We're, the studies today, by the way, say that the modern American church, for the most part, you have about 27 to 32 minutes. 27 to 32 minutes before all the different... Uh, before you start wandering. So make that time count. Make that time count. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.